Hi, and welcome to a hopefully uh, uh, brief description of the LPEX free marker uh, template plugin for Eclipse. All right, so uh, to get to it, just uh, it's hosted on Google Code, so just go to Google and type in LPEX free marker. It's the first result that you get there. Um, you see on the home page, there's a little bit of information about the uh, about the plugin and what we were trying to do when we came up with the idea for it. So um, you'll see that the example here is a basic free marker FTL template. The only difference is the very first chunk of the template is a free marker comment as denoted by the free marker comment tags here but inside of it is an XML form definition that uh, gets parsed by the plugin and uh, presented at, rendered as an actual Eclipse form that you can step through and fill out the information. That information that you fill out is then referred to um, by name uh, see your names here uh, referred to by name in your actual template. So when the merge happens between the data and your template uh, it's referring to the data that's entered on that form that was dynamically built um, by the plugin based on your form definition up here. Alright so uh, let's get into it. So we'll go ahead and download the plugin uh, it's a zip file that's going to contain two folders. Now I already have it on my desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of skip skip ahead here. Um, I downloaded the the zip file here, and I've unfolded it into its own folder on my desktop, so you can see that there's the two files there. Now the first thing that we need to do is install this into the drop-ins folder in RDP. So you navigate to C Program Files, IBM, SDP, and then drop-ins. Um, where you know, your installation directory may be different uh, for your RDP install or your Eclipse install. So just go ahead and uh, you know find your drop-ins folder and uh, and go ahead and drag that folder into there. So you should end up with a structure like this where you have the uh, directory uh, for for the plugin uh, and inside of that you should have the Eclipse folder and the examples folder that were the contents of that zip file. Okay, so moving on, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and start up RDP. So you saw in that examples folder we have a couple of uh, folders underneath that and they're folders based on the parser. So if you're editing an RPG uh, source member, you're only going to be presented with templates in the RPG uh, templates folder. Uh, if you're editing uh, CL, it's the same and so on and so forth. So, uh, Alright, so the first thing you see is, uh, well, actually I clicked and it's gone away now, but it gives you a message telling you that the LPEX uh, uh, plugin LPEX uh, free market template plugin is available and working and listening to the control enter keystroke. <clears throat> Soon that'll be configurable, but uh, right now it's uh, it's hard coded to look for that. So <clears throat> the first thing you'll want to do is go into your preferences and go down to LPEX free market templates. Uh, go ahead and point your uh, templates directory to that examples folder that came with the uh, with the template plugin. And next, uh, the debug log, you can probably do that fine as long as you don't mind the log file written writing out to your um, your C drive at root. Uh, otherwise, put it wherever you'd like. Um, you can also turn it off by clicking the off radio button on your logging level. Uh, I prefer just go ahead and change that to severe. Uh, all right, so now there's also some global preferences that you can set. Uh, default author and the, and the date. You can use the current date by checking this box down here. And you can also specify the format of it. Uh, and then default author, anytime we use the um, dollar sign curly bracket author uh, uh, in all lowercase, it's going to pull in this global preference here. So that keeps you from having to type your, your name and the current date when you're doing things like uh, documentation at the header of your, uh, of your template and that sort of thing. All right, so I'm going to click OK there. All right, so now we're ready. We, we've got it all set up, and we know that it's pointing at the template's uh, example folder, which, uh, if you'd like to see that, it contains um, you know, the two folders, like we were saying. So here's examples, uh, RPG, and then we have our actual template. And in this template, you see it starts out with the XML uh, defining the form. And so we have in that uh, a name of our template, a description, and then prompt groups. And prompt groups are just collections of prompt fields, and prompt fields are just forms. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, form field entries. So there's four different types of prompts. Uh, one is a checkbox, like you see here. Another one is a date. Uh, then you have a regular text field. And then there's multi-line text, which accepts, obviously, as the name implies, multiple lines. Uh, 
All right, so proc groups are uh, rendered as multiple as an, as a unique form. So when you have a prompt group that is a collection of prompts, you're going to get one form for that prompt group that has every one of those form fields or prompts uh, listed on that form. And uh, each prompt has has a name, and uh, this name should be all lowercase, um, without any special characters, without any spaces. Oh, actually, it doesn't have to be all lowercase; it's just case sensitive. So you're going to refer to that down in your template later by name. And the same goes for your prompt group. Your prompt group ne needs to have a name, uh, and just think of it as a variable, that, a variable name in a program. Uh, you don't want to use any special characters or spaces. All right, prompt groups are repeatable, um, and in this case, our first prompt group in this uh, procedure template is uh, we're not going to make that repeatable. We only want to give the definition of our procedure at the top, and we don't want to repeat that. However, down at the bottom here in our other prompt group, our second prompt group, we collect parameters. Uh, and this is obviously repeatable because for a procedure or a method, we will have zero or many parameters. So in this case, we say repeatable yes with max repeats of 10. And inside of that, we have, just like above, on the non-repeatable prompt group, we have prompt definitions. So on the first one, we have our type, which is text. And it's an, you know, we give it a name, which happens to, in this case, be name. Um, we have a label for it, so that on the form, it knows what label to put to the left of that field. Uh, and description. And that description will show up as a tooltip when you hover over the label. And uh, the hint. So hint shows up in the actual form field, and when it's light gray and uh, you know almost barely not visible, and then as soon as you click into it, it goes away and lets you type whatever you want. If you don't type any text and you and you field exit out of it, uh, it comes right back. So that you always have that hint there. So if you want to imply, uh, give them, give the user a hint uh, of, of what type of format you're looking for, that's a good way to do it. All right, and then we have our description down here, and you know it's the same thing repeated. So uh, description, and then a label. Uh, the full description of that of that prompt and then the hint that you want to put in the field. So after we have all of our form definition out there, um, we see that now we're, we can refer to the names that we gave each one of those elements uh, in our form, I'm sorry, in our template definition down here. So we have, uh, you know, the at brief, that's all part of the ILE doc stuff from uh, uh, from that open source ILE docs project. Um, but the stuff that is replaceable is the dollar sign curly bracket uh, open curly bracket and naming curly bracket, and you see we're referring to procedure dot description. Well, where we get that uh, that that naming convention is the name of our prompt group, which is procedure dot the name of the prompt that is a child to that prompt group. So procedure dot name is referring to this prompt group here, which is the procedure name. All right, so that when that uh, merges in the plugin it's going to merge whatever you typed into the procedure description field or procedure name field wherever we're putting them and it's going to merge that in and drop it in in place of that variable placeholder there all right now another example of a variable is the global ones that we defined in the preferences so this is where you typed in your name in in the preferences uh, screen uh, the, as uh, as your as the author and when you use this author variable here it pulls that in and replaces it. And the same goes for date that we put in the preferences too. So now the repeatable prompt groups that we refer to up here for parameters where we said it is repeatable with the maximum of 10. So uh, that's going to continue to show that form, which represents that prompt group. It's going to continue to show that form up to 10 times unless uh, you there's an, there's an entry without any values. So you can type the fill out the form the first time, hit enter, it'll present it again. Fill it in again, hit enter, it'll present it again up to 10 times. Unless after filling it out, you hit enter, and then you hit enter again, leaving the fields blank, um, it's going to uh, go ahead and exit then, assuming that you were done. Okay, so the way that we access that array or that collection of form entries is uh, by the, the prompt group name dot repeats. Repeats is a constant word that's going to be used every time for this collection of repeatable prompt group values. Um, and in this case we're using the list directive from the free marker um, template engine and we're saying for every uh, entry in the repeats array for the parameter prompt group, just think about this as an array of entries, um, we're going to refer to that that current iteration throughout the array as parm. So now we can reference parm.description 
and you'll notice description we're referring to the name of the actual sub prompt underneath that prompt group uh, so that child uh, prompt to the uh, to the repeatable parameter prompt group all right, so it's just going to spit out uh, this chunk of text here and then replace this uh, chunk here with the description that was typed in for that parameter. All right, so moving on down, we see that uh, we're also referring to procedure.namespace, uh, underscore. This doesn't, you know, the underscore doesn't mean anything uh, other than it's going to output an underscore. The only thing that's actually going to be parsed are these variables. So we see the procedure name and the procedure namespace are going to be replaced with the values that were typed in by the user. Same goes for export. If you remember, export was a checkbox up at the top. So let's go back up to there. So we see export. Here's the name. So we're referring to procedure.export. And we see on the type line, or the, in the type element, we define it as a checkbox. And because it's a checkbox, we have a couple of uh, attributes that we can specify here. So the checked value will equal export, and the unchecked value will be an empty string. So that means if it is checked off, and when you do, when you do the merge, if that checkbox is checked, use the export word as, as what you merge in uh, and replace uh, in that variable. Uh, if it's not checked, use an empty string. So uh, we'll move on down. We see the list uh, uh, directive used again, just the same as it was up top here, and to get the parameter description in our documentation. Um, now we're getting the parameter name uh, in our list of parameters uh, in our procedure interface. Uh, this is an, an example of an RPG uh, procedure. Okay, so and then down at the bottom we refer again to our namespace underscore our procedure name. So this shows an example of using the same um, variables uh, multiple times throughout the same template. So that's our template. That's what we're gonna. That's how we're building our form. Uh, we're gonna collect the information. This is how we're merging it in, uh, and uh, this is the out. You know, you can kind of imagine what kind of output we're gonna get. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So Control Enter brings up our prompt. Now this is building uh, a list here based on the files that are in the folder, the RPG folder, because I'm currently um, modifying an SQL RPG LE document. So I'm going to hit enter on the first one there. I'm going to say yes, I do want export. Let's give it a namespace. And hit enter. You'll notice I'm not touching the mouse. This is valuable because most of the time when you're writing code and you just hit control enter and you want to just keep on typing with the keyboard, you don't want to have to touch the mouse. So we take care to make sure that you can do that. So parm1 and then parm1 description. Hit enter. Parm2. Parm2 description. Hit enter again. Now you'll see the fields are empty. I'm going to hit enter one more time and it exits out. All right, so you see we have the actual template uh, merged and placed into our document where our cursor was. We got our block here of uh, Eilie Docs comments, and we typed in procedure description, description, and documentation here. You see it grabbed our global, uh, under the preferences pane, uh, our global name. It took the current date, formatted it the way that we asked it to format it, and the two parameters that we entered, the descriptions are included up here along with the return description. So we know that our looping through the array worked and our repeat worked as well. Um, namespace was the uh, namespace we gave for that procedure and then the name, so it's combined those two together just fine. Remember our checkbox for the export, uh, that's been translated just fine. And then each one of our parameters, uh, just like for the descriptions up top, the parameter names, uh, that for loop or that, uh, that list directive worked just fine. All right, and then down at the bottom we see our procedure name repeated again. So that's it. Uh, that's all there was to it. So those templates can be used for anything, uh, any language, as long as you're in the LPEX editor, uh, you can take advantage of this. So I hope that you enjoyed this. This is the first alpha version, and we're going to continue to develop it. And uh, please uh, reply on, on the uh, project page if you have any ideas. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.